I'll be recording this as well for people who wanted to catch the recording. We're here to talk about Jewish digital citizenship uh, and the online mensch. That is the name of our course. And here is our iconic figure. We are working on getting some uh, menchiot in there, some females in that graphic as well. <laughs> Even though technically I think men is a boy, but I think we can uh, all spice it up. So we're here to we're here to talk about why we have why we have such a thing as an online mensch and what kind of digital ship digital citizenship issues we've had with our students because I know I've had a lot. Uh, and I don't know if you've had any, uh, but I've certainly been there many times saying, gosh, I wish I had a course for this to talk about what it is that we need to talk about when we talk about Jewish digital citizenship and what we're not talking about and what Jewish sources, how does this fit into our heritage, uh, et cetera. So then I designed this course with one of my colleagues at JETS. That's what we do. We design digital courses and we train teachers also to design their own depending on their budget, skill set, uh, background, etc. So, Leslie, have you had a digital digital citizenship moment? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Do you have? I want to avoid it. You're trying to avoid it, yeah. Well, if you remove all devices, then you sort of can, sort of, kind of avoid it. Um, but our children are using it anyway, right? So even if they're not using it in your class, they're using it certainly on their own time. And as Jewish educators, is it our responsibility to address some of the issues that come up? And if it is, then how do we do it? And what are some ways? So what are some methods? Uh, how can we get it going? And feel free, uh, the guys in house there, to chat in your responses. If you do get your microphone going, uh, then feel free to chat if you have had a digital citizenship moment or when you wish to be had the online match. Personally, I've had many. I have four teenagers, so we have these moments pretty much about every minute of the day. <laughs> so, what do you mean by moment? Uh, where you um, say this is not an appropriate way to post on. Uh, okay, that's what. Okay. Or WhatsApp, or to me, <laughs> or you know, where you are posting with the phone uh, or anything with a device to someone else. Okay. My dog, Scarlett. You've had many, you tell us. Do you want to share one with us? So um, I've had a bunch. We've had people who, and we'll look at it in the course. The course, this is, oops, they're going to reboot. Okay, we are going to look at a course that we designed, and we'll be taking a look at the actual course, which has actual instances. Uh, and it's a course for parents, students, and teachers. Uh, so we'll just continue here. So just... Um, how often do you think teens check social media? Nonstop. On their phones, nonstop. Okay, so would you guess two to three times a day, five times a day, or hourly if they had their... If they had their druthers, it would be hourly. Yeah, this is actually a poll, but because we are just a few people, we can, but you could do it. This is also an example of uh, digital content that you see that as people would respond, the answers would pop up on the screen. So yeah, they do it hourly. If they, statistics say they tell us to ch they check up even to a thousand times a day, which is a little disturbing. And here's just a statistic of, like you said, let me just close it up, almost constantly, uh, this 2018 almost constantly, um, it's a lot. And they're getting hours and hours and hours of screen time. So again, as educators, what is our approach if we if we are approaching it and my say is we should because we're supposed to be the leaders in education and models and showing them what to be and how to be that's what education is all about so what is our approach to screen time to what we're watching what they're doing what they're saying and how to say it um why is cyberbullying or online bullying easier to perpetrate they say one in four youth um, experience cyberbullying which is a very high statistic uh, so why do you think uh, that is that so many easier? Because you can't you can't monitor everything every kid is doing all the time if they all have cell phones or they're working on laptops as opposed to when they had pencil and paper and you can't monitor what they do in their laps and their pockets. 
Yeah, well, we couldn't necessarily monitor their notebooks either, but it wasn't, it didn't affect the child sitting next to them or the child in the back. It didn't go out to the masses. Right. Hi, you're back. Can you hear us now? Can you talk? Do you have audio? Still not. You now. Now oh. can you hear us? Yes, you are live. Okay. Oh, Sorry, okay. we didn't mean to just leave the room uh, without saying anything. So, see the person's face. You don't see their reaction when they read this horrible statement that you might have said about them. And it's much easier to be quote unquote mean to someone when you can't, and you don't have to say it. And you can text it or Snapchat it when you know it'll disappear in an Instagram y kind of way, uh, things like that. Uh, Leslie, you're in your back. Um, what do you think? Many adolescents recognize the impact of social media, but feel powerless to confront it. True or false? Huh. Um, I would say based upon what I've heard from teens and teens, um, this is, um, they, they do feel powerless because they, feel like it's a part of their body they can't like do without yeah are you all there yeah Ooh. hi leslie now we hear you do you hear us i don't know what's happening here. leslie i hear you now oh, okay yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. You hear me? that students do feel powerless to confront it is they don't know what to do they don't know who to go to if they've been shamed or they've shamed someone they don't know what the next step is there isn't a set procedure in place at home, in school, in every classroom, in the hallway. There's no plan. If someone hits someone in the school, there's a plan. If someone needs disciplinary action in a school, often there's a plan. For this, there's often no plan. And that is why most teens will ignore being cyberbullied or cyberbullying themselves because they don't know what the plan is. Um, why are parents reluctant to uh, get involved? What would be your number one answer here? <laughs> Well, we live in Silicon Valley, so it's definitely not, they don't have the technical abilities. Okay. Um, I think lack of basic understanding is also not our issue. I, uh, I, I, I don't know. I would, you, I would I not know. completely agree with the technical abilities because they, the parents may be tech savvy in terms of their work and technically very well qualified, but don't necessarily have the know-how on what the children are doing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. or what okay. the apps yeah. are but uh i think something else over there uh missing is besides lack of time is just sort of they aren't they think it's only the school's responsibility mm. okay good one and the school thinks it's the home responsibility <laughs> no actually not we think it's a combined responsibility right. the parents the kids and us okay so that's important because I've been to a lot of schools. I go around the world. I've worked with over 2,000 teachers, and not everyone has a plan. A lot of people are finger pointing. A lot of people are just like, what? It's my job. It's your job. They're not really sure. So if you already have an approach that it's everyone's responsibility, that's ideal. Uh, but because yeah. of the factors on the screen and because of the factors that you just mentioned, it often gets left by the wayside, which doesn't help our teens, and it doesn't help our kids, and it doesn't help us. So that leads us to the fact this was like the kind of the trauma set is our kids are growing up on a digital playground and no one is on recess duty because of that. So our goal is now to get on duty. And that's our plan right here. So we are going to start the course. This is what it looks like. Again, this was designed by uh, my company, myself and a few colleagues. It comes with uh, a teacher edition, a student edition and a parent edition. It comes with three hours of activities for teachers and students and two hours of activities if you do the whole thing for parents. So I'm going to open it up to you. We'll probably have time to look at one or two. Which one would you like to look at first? Uh, can teacher. we do the, uh, the teacher or the parent? The teacher or the parent, which one? Well, we can start with teacher and then we can move to parent if you like. Okay. So the base, if you get, this is the course, it's for purchase. It's $149 for the whole entire school until July uh, 30th. So you do want to take advantage of that. To get a full screen, you just press those three dots and then you're in full screen. The goal of the course is for students to create an online mensch campaign. So everything they see here, 
they have to internalize and then demonstrate how they will say, I am an online mensch because so they can create videos, posters, campaigns, slogans, Instagram pages, whatever it is they want, gain followers. That's the goal of all the courses for the teacher and student course. So it's student driven and they get a level one certificate and we'll be adding level two and three uh, as time goes by. So the first thing we do is kind of set the tone for what is digital. Enjoy this movie, then visit BrainPod. To Tim and Moby, what's the deal with digital etiquette? From George. Digital etiquette, or netiquette, is a set of rules for how to behave online. Right, it's a lot like real-life etiquette, which is basically a code of conduct for having good manners and treating others with common courtesy and respect. It's just as important in our digital lives, including how we act in online games, or how we communicate in emails and instant messages, in chat rooms, and on message boards, blogs, and social networking sites. Whoa, how are you doing that? Unfortunately, some people can lose control the second they jump online. Well, like when they disagree with someone or have strong feelings about a topic, they end up saying stuff they'd never say in person. They may send rude emails and IMs or try to start arguments on message boards. That's called flaming, and it can lead to full-on flame wars, insulting arguments between two or more users. Believe it or not, some people actually cruise around the Internet looking to start flame wars. We call these troublemakers trolls. Kind of fitting, huh? Well, I don't think they necessarily become meaner people. Maybe they just forget the rules. On the Internet, it's pretty easy to stay anonymous or unidentified. Having a secret identity to hide behind can make people pretty brave. And when all they see of you is a screen name or a funny icon, they might forget they're dealing with a real human being. Well, it's simple. Just like in real life, you should treat other people the way you want to be treated. It talks a little bit more about that, and he even says, you know, you even need permission to post pictures. Do I have permission to post these pictures of you? Things that we don't think about when kids are constantly taking pictures of themselves. So let's take a look at some samples of what actually does happen in the kids' world. This is a fake Instagram page. We made this up, but it is certainly based on reality, but this is a free for reuse image. Tried it for basketball, so my kids are trying out serious losers, you should have seen. The, you know, really just not nice things. And does this happen? You know, pretty much, yes. That's Instagram. We have a Facebook, which uh, although less kids nowadays are on Facebook, Facebook is actually the average age is 42 on Facebook. Uh, as my kids say, mommy, Facebook for all people. Um, but if you do want to include it, so here's one sample, sharing, uh, liking and sharing things that are inappropriate and rude. What does that mean to like something inappropriate or to share something disrespectful? So talking about which, uh, we'll get to Jewish sources in a minute, uh, just a chat between two friends, speaking not nicely about her clothes, and then a group chat, seventh grade guys, and planning on leaving one kid out, yeah? That's a big problem. Group chats are a big issue. Yeah. Big issue. Huge. Huge. My kids uh, when you leave, leave kids out. Even even on like simple Google chat on Google Docs. It's like yeah. YouTube. Completely. So again, what are we doing about it? If we are going to advocate group chatting or do we talk about it? Do we stick our heads in the sand and say, well, not for me, or do we talk about it? What's our plan? What's our policy? Um, this, by the way, was made on something called I Fake Text Message, which is a really fun site. You can make up stories. It's good for biblical drama. We do things, uh, we encourage things like that, too. IFakeTextMessage.com. Free site. Um, but wait, there's more. Um, online bullying. This was taken from ISTI. It's the beginning of a story. This is a story about Kristen Lane. And Kristen was a junior at the time. And wanted to sell her, excuse me, was going in to become a senior and wanted to sell her prom dress from her junior year in order to get money to buy a prom dress for her senior year. So she posted a picture online and asked for people to buy the prom dress. Unfortunately, what she got was a series of people 
who were making horribly hateful comments about her, making fun of her weight, making fun of her looks. She responded the way you should, as appropriately as possible, but it was relentless. It didn't stop. They kept going, kept bugging her, kept pestering her, kept cutting her down. You've heard enough stories like this by now, but I could probably stop here, and you could probably tell me the ending. So have you heard stories like that and their endings? Um, yeah, so go ahead. It can end in tragedy. We've all heard of circumstances like that. Uh, where the rest of the story is going to come up in a few minutes. So what do we do now? This was like the depressing part. All these terrible statistics, kids are shaming, bullying, doing all these horrible things. What, can, what do we do and what does our heritage do to talk about these issues? So here are some online men's sources. These are four sources. Sorry, Leslie. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So um, everyone speak Hebrew here? No, so we'll just, yeah. no, so English. Uh, these are from Pirkei Avot, Ethics of Our Fathers. Judge every man favorably. Do not be a gossip monger among your people. Don't, be, don't gossip. That is a biblical law, not to speak about people. We can see, and we'll see what that means in a minute. Stepping up, be an upstander, not a bystander. If you do see someone being bullied in a place where there's no man, strive to be a man, and that's just translated from the word ish. You could certainly use woman or a person. Who is honorable? He who honors created beings. He who honors human beings, that's a person who we need to honor, not what often society tells us, dictates as celebrities and, and whatnot. And you see these pulsating dots. Each one of these has a video and text describing further what the concept is. So what does it mean not to gossip? Don't speak badly about someone, even if it's true. Don't repeat anything about someone else, even if it's good. Don't talk about people. I have a, I had a rabbi who told me we talk about ideas, not people. And mm, to make I that, like that. yeah. Ideas, not people, nice. And make that a mantra. And if that's the mantra of the school, if that's the online mensch campaign and give examples, and if those are slogans around your building, and if that's modeled by staff and students, all these ideas. Um, you know, I'll speak no, you will hear no, you see it, let's say I'm sorry, forgive, etc. Here's a little video about uh, Lashon Haras gossiping. Uh, the Chafetz Chaim was a man, his name was Yisrael Meir Kagan, he was a rabbi who lived in the uh, late 18th, early uh, late 1800s, early or in the teachers, teaching the teachers what to do is for the students to create a campaign. So if they want the campaign to be, we talk about ideas, not people. If they want the campaign to be jump off the wagon or jump off social media or jump off Instagram or whatever it is. So taking these ideas and turning them into something practical uh, for themselves. Uh, about judging people favorably. I don't know if you know the uh, rabbinic story about Kamsa and Bar Kamsa. Uh, it's a five-minute video. This one's a Bim Bam Godcast video about uh, two gentlemen who were invited to a party and one wanted to take revenge on the other one, and they acted very unfavorably. So that's about what happens, and basically the temple was destroyed because of that story. And then here's another story about a guy who his rock a rock is thrown through his car, his new Jaguar. He gets up and he holds the kid up. Why are you doing that? He says, please, I didn't know what else to do. I threw the brick, no one would stop. My brother, he fell off out of his wheelchair. I can't get him up. And the first thing I saw, I threw a brick and it hit your car. I'm so sorry, but obviously 
it was forgivable. So judge people fair. Don't don't be so quick to make judgments on social media. That is an acute thing. People see something instantly react without fully understanding context. Teach kids to slow down, take a breath, count to ten. How can you view this favorably? And there'll be other examples later on. Uh, stepping up, another video about a bystander. We know that children are using the internet from a very young age um, and at Childnet for example we start talking to three-year-olds about being safe online but there's a lot of webinar telling someone if they see something that they don't like on the internet for example so I think it's never too young to start talking about internet safety with your children if a child is being cyberbullied, there's lots that they can do. Firstly, they need to save the evidence of the cyberbullying that has occurred, uh, either taking a screenshot on their phone, for example, or taking a picture. Uh, they can report and block um, contacts that they are being cyberbullied by, um, and most importantly, to tell an adult. Uh, telling an adult about cyberbullying or someone that they trust is the most important thing that they need to remember as well. So you can take a stand against cyberbullying by being an upstander. If you see someone being bullied, make sure that you step in and do something about it and don't be a bystander. So you can do that in a number of ways. You can diffuse the situation with positive language, maybe positive images uh, or humour. You can offer the person that's being cyberbullied or bullied your friendship. Ask them. That was kind of like that video that we saw at the beginning of and you know, you can watch each of the videos. That's why students are encouraged to watch the videos with either with the class or individually. If each student has a device, they can kind of follow this along and then pause when the teacher asks them to and have classroom discussions, uh, or they can do it as a group. And here are issues, things you can do to be a bystander, not an upstander. Again, that could be part of the campaign. You have comments there? And then here is the ending to that prom story. Who is honorable? He who honors the created. You've heard enough stories like this by now. But I could probably stop here, and you could probably tell me the ending. You can, you see, where this go. You can see where this would ultimately lead. And it was until one student, maybe one of yours, we posted, I think you look beautiful. And then, it's the father of a teenage girl that story hits close to home. And then got others to do the same. And before you knew it, people started flooding her with comments about how wonderful and beautiful she was. And in a statement against cyberbullying, people began contributing, pouring in contributions. Here. Kristen ended up making $5,000 and used that money to help buy dresses for other people in her school that couldn't afford them. So people started writing positive comments and in one after one person wrote, I think you look beautiful. People started writing positive things and people started donating. And now she, there's both of you talking. Oh, you can't hear anything? No, now there's both of you talking. Yeah. He was, anyway. Okay. Uh, she ended up making $5,000 and she started like what we, uh, a charity for to buy for prom dresses to buy for kids who didn't have, who didn't have uh, that money to share. Who didn't have money to buy a prom dress. And she ended up making that from her uh, experience. So it became a positive. Uh, so that's respecting others. And then here's respecting people who are different, caring for animals, not to embarrass, look to help. So these are a bunch of sources and the students should be encouraged to take one and make one their own and put it into their campaign. They can work in partners, work in groups, and it can be any kind of campaign that the school would like to project. A digital one, which would make sense, or it could be something non-digital. Um, the school is encouraged then to create a tech policy. What is your policy? We said in the beginning, you said in your school in Silicon Valley, it's a parental plus school approach. So is there an example of a policy you have in place that if there is an infraction of cyberbullying, what happens? So what's an example? So we've had to actually refer to the uh, agreement on a few occasions this year. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there was a case, for instance, of a student who um, used, was his own laptop and he did inform his parents that that is what we saw. And referring to the policy, it was not a breach of policy. So mm-hmm. it wasn't something in school he had broken the law. But morally, we felt obliged to let his parents know that these were the websites he was on. Um, we were grateful. Yeah. So that's a good example of a policy. So here you're encouraged, you and your students are encouraged partially together. And then I think, you know, the administration should have some kind of final say. Well, what is your tech policy? What are your guidelines? What are your goals? And right. each classroom will look a little different, and that's okay. That's the point of the student campaign that you should sign this for yourself. And why is it important that should be included in the campaign? And consequences, what consequences? Students have to be very clearly understand what consequences will I face if I do this? If I am gossiping online, if I am not being a bystander, if I am allowing cyberbullying, if I am jumping to conclusions, what consequences will I face? So here's a sample. Uh, Use technology to learn, collaborate, share, explore. Here are student guidelines, always check before posting. Simple things like you check before you hand in a test. Check what you posted before you hit send, before you hit record, before you hit anything. And you know, whatever each school, this should be different for every student, for every classroom, for every campaign. You decide what are the parameters, uh, but it should be different. Why is it important? Uh, Because our Jewish heritage demands it. For example, if you want to focus on uh, accept every person with a smile on their face and of course consequences um, if you're not an online mensch. So here are some other interactions and we just remind them difference of reply and reply all. It sounds basic, sounds simple, but I can't tell you how many schools I go to where kids and parents and teachers get into trouble for hitting yep. these things. <laughs> okay. Embarrassing typos, making sure what I send is not offensive, it doesn't violate gossiping, things like that. Um, So here we have for this again, this one's for teachers. So the student and the parent version have all the same content that you saw with a little bit of differences. So here, these are teachers are encouraged to write this as a Padlet so everyone can share and everyone can post. So teachers here can brainstorm together all over the world and say, well, what are your goals? What are your implementations? What are your consequences? Notice, notice that column is still blank. <laughs> okay. yeah, but that's you, interesting. Mm-hmm. So these are, tell me again, Smudra, these are what other people, other people have um, sent to you? Well, this is a Padlet. When you purchase the course and you go through it just like I do, you have access to this just like I have right now. And this part is for teachers and you're encouraged to write yourself. So here, Mr. Bennett wrote, Having a person in front of you makes you think before speaking. In a digital world, we lose this. It's easier to speak. We need to create our boundaries of mental fight in digital world. So you would write what you want to write. And then we can all learn from each other. Maybe we get, yeah, this is a good idea. Students should be aware that their use is being monitored. If you know your screen is being monitored or recorded, like if your school uses something like Go Guardian or like what you were able to catch that student on inappropriate sites because it was monitored. What if it wasn't? So certainly students will be more cautious if they know it's monitored. So it's, this is a brainstorming uh, area. And then we also put it in practice at the bottom. Here's some sources that J.K. Rowling, I'm a Potterhead, I don't know if you are, <laughs> but uh, she stood up She stood up to anti-Semitism. She saw this tweet and she wrote, a response, most UK Jews in my timeline are currently having to feel this kind of, perhaps some of us non-Jews should start shouldering the burden. Anti-Semites think this is a clever argument where atheist Jews exempted from wearing the yellow star. She's got her, it's got her act together as they say. And, and also showing people like her who are in the realm of celebrities, who are in the realm of thoughtful thinking people who students do know, look what she's doing. She didn't have to respond, she could have let that go. She became an upstander over a bystander, which is what her books are about, and encouraging that kind of behavior. Um, And she writes again, no, you are not alone. We stand with you. And look at the stairs on that. 
Um, so here, then we, this is for teachers again. So ask them which of the Jewish sources we studied applies to J.K. Rowling's conversation. Is it gossiping? Is it being an upstander? Is it respecting others and have them argue it out? And that's a form of higher order thinking. Challenge students to create a skit or a video to, and, and connect it to one of the Jewish sources and facilitate a discussion. Then you practice. This is again an open scenario where teachers are encouraged to post. The student's family went out for dinner last night. Service at the Kosher Haven was awful. The family <laughs> aims to post a scathing review and asks your opinion. What would the online mensch do? Every question ends, ends, ends with what would the online mensch do? And that's the phrase. You say it enough times, hopefully <laughs> it will sink in. You see students public shaming online about a girl's weight, just like that video. You see on the Guru's clock check, and someone posts the answers to the homework. That, that is actually a Jewish law. That's called Gnevat Dat, stealing knowledge. You're not supposed to share homework. At least inform them. Um, and then people, teachers here, write responses. And here he says, review gossiping. Consider, are there any circumstances that might have led to the bad experience at Kosher Haven? Maybe someone called in sick and the restaurant was understaffed. Give people the benefit of the doubt, which is one of our Jewish sources. That's... So this is really, um, these were taken from actual sites about the public shaming. You would be a knockout if you lost weight. I've had friends tell me that. I've had kids say that. These are inappropriate comments and we need to say, we have to be aware and just because you wouldn't say it to someone. So don't write it. Uh, and then you start your campaign and the students are then given time to create the campaign and share it. We at our company will have a global online mensch campaign in November and we will be collating all the campaigns. We'll pick a winner, they will get a prize, we will mail it to them from Amazon. Uh, and then if you want to participate in it, uh, then you can join that too and you can have access to other people's, the top three, top three selected choices. You'll have access to other people's campaigns uh, and you'll be able to participate and be part of a global online mensch campaign contest. Um, and you have a checklist. Right, so let me see, let's see that checklist again. Yeah. Yeah. I've created guidelines, I have a plan, ramifications, I've studied Jewish sources, I've analyzed what it means to be an online mentor in my class. And this is also feedback. We also ask feedback for from you, the participant. What did you find most meaningful? What else did you like to see? And then you can also submit your online campaign here. Um, those who uh, here, they can also they can be emailed to onlinemensch@gmail.com, and that's when uh, it is. I'll add the date soon. Uh, and again, this, the student and the parent edition have all of everything you've seen here except the, the Padlets or the collaborative boards. The students do not have the collaborative boards because it would, would probably lead to online shaming. So I don't want to allow that. But they, what they have it is they have questions in a Google form, which is private one to one. And this. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And we would, and we have the data, but we would share the data. With the schools. This is for parents. Yeah, that would be great to see some parent stuff. Yeah. yeah. What is your what are your screen protocols? Do you have a policy at mealtimes? Are you do you allow your children to bring phones to the table? For example, at my house, we don't. If your phone is at the table, I take it and I throw it on the couch. That everyone does that. <laughs> and that's just what happened. Uh, do you have does your phone, does your child's phone have a bedtime? Do they sleep with it next to their bed? Does it ding all night long? I've seen kids sleep with the dinging all night long. Uh, science say, scientists say that the screen, you know, the, the blue light reflection an hour before bed needs to be shut down in order for your brain to calm down and process and relax. But kids are on it all the time. They are certainly not getting enough sleep. You ask them why, oh, I was chatting, Instagramming, whatever. So just bring, all of these are in the form of questions. We don't want to attack parents. Don't want right. to tell them what to do, but they're all questions. Right. 
And Smadar, have you ever used this with parent? I mean, have you done this already? So we launched this program um, just a couple of weeks ago at Yavna, and it is the end of the school year. I am aware of that, but that's when we finished writing it. So that's when we launched it. Uh, so we'll do another major launch in the summer uh, before school starts. And then we do workshops. And I do come to the East Coast a few times a year, and I do live workshops there. And parents are invited to come. Happy to come to the West Coast, too, if I have enough uh, lead time. Uh, and then we can So who, where, which Yavna? Yavna where? In New Jersey, okay. in Paramus. And then you're also encouraged, if you purchase the course, you can also do this yourself. You're educators, right? So you purchase the course, you have a parent event, or you send some questions home based on this. Uh, one right. of the schools said for every newsletter they have now that they send home to parents, they're going to include one of these questions. So tell us again, what was the, I know you mentioned the cost at the beginning. What is the cost for each of these? Right now, it's $149 for everything for your whole school. And that price will be going up in the summer. August for all three of these modules? For all of the modules? Yeah, it's a steal. Correct. Yeah, it is a great price, no doubt. Yeah. Till, till July, what did you say, sorry? Till the end of July. Okay. So, so it's my jar. When they let's say the parent is using this, mm -hmm. so they when they click on like at meal times, do they get that same box that you just brought up? Yeah, everything you see is what they will see. Is what they see. Okay. And then where would you like? What's your suggestion? Let's say so they went to uh, other home usage and there are these questions. Where do they answer them on a Google form? Uh, they, I don't have, I think I have a Google form. I don't have a lot of answer space for parents. It's really for them to encourage them to think about, to think about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, sit down with your spouse, with your partner, yeah. with what, yeah. with your children and say, right. hey, right. it's like a car. A phone is like a car. It can do a lot of damage. And if you don't have training and rules and guidelines, right. Kids are being ruined. No one is going to deny this anymore. It's not a question oh, no, of no, no. Yeah, no, no. We, yeah. I mean, I think everybody's on the same page as far as that goes. I think it's the process to get to the right, um, you know, the right balance of screen and non-screen where I think uh, it almost seems like parents and educators are not talking the same language. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> an age-old problem, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's not true just for technology, too. Yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. No, as a longtime educator, I may be new in Jewish education, but as a thirty-year classroom vet, yeah, that is an ongoing conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. It is. You know, in ten years, it'll be something else. So it'll be the Google Watch or the glasses or whatever. But it'll be something that. Uh, we wish parents would be more aware. I like I took parenting classes about this, and if she wouldn't have told me these things, I wouldn't have done it. It just didn't occur. It just didn't occur to me. And I'm an educator. I think, well, you know, I should know these things. Well, I didn't. So I wish, you know, and I wish it would have happened earlier. You know, with my 17 year old, I'm not going to have the same effect as with my 12 year old. Yes, exactly. Oh yeah big difference between yeah. the two. So my 12 year old either her phone goes into my room at 8 30 or i have a filter on it and it just shuts down yeah she complains every night and i say she says i hate that filter i said i love it yeah. <laughs> i love that filter because otherwise she'd be on it till all hours yeah yeah a 12 is too young too young too, yeah I'm and too, too young to sleep with it and you know be awake with because of the phone basically and, and I'm sure you know that half of her friends are on it till one in the morning. No, no, I know, I know. And I don't know what I would have done if my children were that age now. Mine are 18 and 21 now, so oh. I did not have a fraction of, I mean, every year has been so different. Yeah, it gets worse every year. Yeah. It does, and if you're not, if I'm not home, if I'm out one night, I know that phone shuts down at 8.30, it's a blessing. If I'm home, I take it. But here I know it, that phone shuts down whether I'm home or not. If she can still call me for emergencies, it always works. Yeah. So does your child have a filter on their phone? At what age? It can shut. You can choose some of these filters. You can choose to shut down the right. social media. You can keep WhatsApp on. You can keep. Yeah, but WhatsApp is not always so safe either. No. 
So that's the basic gist of the course. They also have this, uh, this also has the Jewish sources for parents okay. and, and the tech policy is a little bit different at home. Okay. Your tech policy is different at home. Right, right. Because it should be. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. And then the student version has some more interactive games. And you can see here by the pink circle, we almost finished the teacher one. We're about halfway through with the parent, and now we just started. You see that little pink dot there? So, and you can get rid of that by pressing the three bars here. And that goes through. So, again, the beginning, they all have the same, but the students have, I said, Google Forms, and they have some other games uh, that, are, that are interactive. But everybody has this. And we'll be adding level two and level three. Level two will be who's behind the screen, security, and why does my digital why does my digital footprint last forever? That you know, kids think that just because oh, I sent a picture of me in a bikini, but it was on Snapchat or Instagram and it disappeared. Well, you know, maybe not. Um, so my son said to me, "Well, if you screenshot it, you get a you get a." Uh, what's it called a notification that you've been trolled or something i'm like okay really well who screenshotted it you don't know <laughs> you just don't know yeah and you and someone needs to tell kids you know when you get a job when you go to university when you're sending in your resume the first thing offices do now is google you and if there's anything out there that you did when you were a teenager when you weren't thinking so clearly it's all there and there goes that job there goes that internship there goes that volunteer opportunity that you wanted. And kids need to be told this. They don't think about it. They don't realize it. They think they're invincible, king of the world. Yep. And not even to talk about what they're sending pictures of themselves to you know, romantic relationships. I think I'll have a, a fourth course on uh, sexuality I'm very, very much considering that. Here they drag to the right place. And if it's wrong, it goes out. So this part is only for the kids. And then it tells you uh, at the end how many you got right. I guess I'm not doing that one right. Come on, fit. There we go. There we go, and social media. Some of them are kind of versatile. Maybe the last one. Yeah. All of these students that you stepped in. There we go. Bad mouthing teachers. Where do you think that goes? Don't gossip. Don't spread rumors. Don't gossip. Yeah. What about that one? The middle one. That tells you how well you did, and you can play again. So here, the students um, get those same questions that you saw on the Padlet, but they get it in a Google form. So it's one to one, and there's no place for bullying. <laughs> And then they have at the end also your guidelines. So here's, this is the one thing that is uh, social. If you, what's your number one guideline? And this is for everyone. So whatever you would answer here, if I reviewed before posting, and that'll appear in the middle. And this is communal. You all, all students will have a chance to post here. And then they get a certificate. They get a level one certificate for this one. They'll get a level two for who's behind the screen. They'll get a level three for footprint lasting forever. They'll get a level four for uh, me and my sexuality or sharing or privacy. I'll think, you know, I'll think of a good name for it, but it'll be along those lines about why it's inappropriate to send pictures of yourself, compromise situations, language, the way kids talk today about romantic relationships is can be quite inappropriate, vulgar. So, you know, just again, awareness. And then they're supposed to make their campaigns, which we'll be collecting in November. Mm -hmm. So is this um, targeted for middle school age? Are you looking at like, you know, 
six to eighth graders? Are you looking for high school? Or are you looking for our little kids? Again, I'm in a supplementary school. Mm -hmm. And so um, I have a feeling we use technology a lot different than you would in a day school. Um, but I do think this has a lot to do with Jewish ethics and morals. And I can see where this would be, you know, phenomenal for our Hebrew high kids and, and our sixth and seventh grade kids as they start, you know, discussing current events and, and real world topics. But um, I just wondered if you had a goal, you know, grade ban you were looking at. We thought up to about grade nine or 10, and we would start probably at grade four. But I okay. think you can also pick and choose. Like the intro video, that brain pop one, that was a bit young. So if you're showing it to your Hebrew high kids, you know, maybe skip that one and go straight to the video about the girl and her prom dress and the, and the social media inappropriate responses. You know, those are two good, real, real good story sets to launch the course for high school. And if you're starting with younger, then I would start with the brain pop video and maybe skip the prom just if you think it. So that's why there's a lot of content in here. And you can, if you're showing it or if you're guiding your students, click here, click here, skip the next one. Go there. It depends if everyone has a device or if you're all, if you're showing it on a screen behind you. All right. Thank you. Sure. That's cool. Thank you. We worked hard on it. And uh, yeah. I, uh, I think you need to take this more than Jewish classrooms. This needs to go mainstream. But I had interesting things happen in my public school classrooms with kids and bullying I've, that I'd like to avoid here. But here I think it's about teaching them to be mentors and upstanding human beings. Um, cool. Sure. Well, I'm happy to send it, you know, a sample to anyone. I can show you, you know, this webinar is being recorded and I'm happy to share it. You can skip through it as you like. And I think it's available to anybody who it will help. My goal is to share this with anyone who it will help. The help. Good luck. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is great. Thank you. Cool. And your participation in the webinar cost, I don't know, $30 or something. So that will be deducted if you do choose to purchase the 149. It's minus the 31 from your webinar. Thank you. What was your first name again? Madar, S-M-A-D-A-R. Okay. So thank you for your participation, your comments, your feedback. Happy to be in touch.